Hello everyone, I'm Trophy Lai from the University of Lübeck. Today my presentation will be evolving around the temporal rhythmicity in distractor suppression. First, a uh, kind of a bit of a disclaimer and also to state my definition of entrainment in my opinion, I cited this uh, quote from this review paper by Jonas Oblazer and Christoph Kaiser in Trends in Cognitive Sciences, wherein they stated that neural entrainment thus requires one or more self-sustained oxidation processes to start with. So for me, entrainment is, it involves two oxidating processes or systems, so to say. One is the system to be entrained and the other one is the entraining one. So the very important assumption here is that usually when we talk about the entrained system, we talk about attention or we talk about the neural systems. And my interest lies within distractor suppression. And the very important point here, if we want to study entrainment and distractor suppression would be then to test whether distractor suppression itself is oxidatory as well. And then we can use rhythmic distractors, for instance, to kind of test whether it will modulate behavior, but that will be another, uh, or like um, further on or further studies. So in this presentation, as a disclaimer, I'm not testing this entrainment per se, but I'm testing this assumption behind. So namely, whether distractor suppression is rhythmic. So there are studies already on this intrinsic rhythm in target selection. So usually what they do is they jittered the onset time of target, like here, they jittered it, uh, target embedded within the white noise. And then they see whether there is a fluctuation of uh, performance, in this case, sensitivity. And in this study, you can see that, or we can see that there is kind of a rhythmicity at around theta range when we plotted it uh, as a function of target onset time. And this kind of results were also shown in visual domain as well. So the question is then, whether distractor suppression is rhythmic and we can't directly measure distractor suppression, right? So we need to see whether uh, task performance will be rhythmically vulnerable to distractor suppression or to distraction, sorry. So what we do usually is that we have this encoding phase where we presented participants with some stimuli like digits or tones. And then there is a task later, be it a more working memory related like recall or a more sensory memory related, uh, whether there is uh, the same pitch or not. And then we put a distractor in between these two phases and we want to see whether the distractor onset time, so when we put this distractor, will modulate the performance. And if so, how? Would it be a linear modulation or even a rhythmic modulation? So that's what we are interested in. So what we did at first, which is a uh, work mostly done by my supervisor, Martha Versmont, is on working memory. So what we did was we have this irrelevant speech task where we presented participants a series of digits uh, and they need to remember the order of it. And in the retention period, we presented a distractor, which is a sentence uh, with a jitter time course, essentially. And then we ask participants to record the order of the digits. And we plotted the accuracy of this digit or the serial recall performance, as well as the N1 amplitude to the distractor, so to the distractor, which will then represent the encoding of distractor as a function of distractor onset time. So first we can see a very nicely negative correlation between accuracy, which is the behavioral measure, and the neural measure, which is uh, N1 amplitude. And this makes sense because the higher the N1 amplitude, better we are encoding uh, with the encoding of the distractor. And this will be more detrimental to the target performance, which will be a lower accuracy. And this is the first point. And we want to see then what there is a rhythmicity in these two time courses. And what we did was we ran a linear mixed model uh, with sine and cosine transform uh, distractor onset time as a rhythmic predictor, so to say. And so to extract the rhythmicity or the magnitude of this modulation at a certain frequency range. 
So what we saw is a rhythmic modulation in accuracy and N1 at around delta theta range. And we also found a common rhythm by using cross power spectral density at around 2.5 Hertz, which is quite interesting as well. And then we did this follow-up experiment yeah, to see whether there is a rhythmic influence of this pattern time on pitch discrimination using a pitch discrimination task. So participants needed to identify whether the two targets that happen consecutively are the same or different in terms of pitch. In half of the trials, there is a distractor. So we call it a distractor presence condition. And the distractor may occur randomly at 24 distractor ons at time. And to point out the distractor is a tone structure with a 25 Hertz temporal structure, which will be then important later when we try to extract this distractor encoding related uh, neural measure. And in the other half of tr the trials, there is no distractor and we call them the distractor absence trial. So here it is more like a sanity check to show you that the distractor is really distracting, namely the sensitivity is lower when the distractor is present. Moving on to whether there is a modulation of distractor onset time to neural and behavioral measure. What we did was uh, first for neural measure, we extract this magnitude of ERP, uh, so the ERP amplitude at 25 Hertz and for each distractor onset time. So for each of them, we uh, average all the trials to create the ERP and then we take the magnitude at 25 Hertz. And we did the same thing with sensitivity. So we calculated sensitivity at each distractor onset time as well. And then we remove the quadratic trend because we want to see like uh, the rhythmicity of uh, the higher frequency compared to the quadratic trend. And then we created these sensitivity time course, which is blue in color and the ERP amplitude time course, which is orange in color. And we cross correlated them to create a third time course, which is the cross correlation. And then we throw these three time courses into each of them into one linear mix model for each frequency with also the sine and cosine predictor to extract basically how much it is modulated at that particular frequency. And we found around delta range and theta range for sensitivity, which is the behavioral measure, and around theta range for ERP amplitude, as well as for cross correlation. Oh, and of note, uh, sensitivity and ERP amplitude across the time course are also negatively correlated as previous study showed as well. So this is more or less uh, consistent with the notion that distractor suppression is rhythmic in nature. Then, uh, so it is a bit of a preliminary study in the next one that I'm showing you, which will focus on whether rhythmic distractors are more distracting or whether it will modulate behavioral performance in the end. What we did was we also used uh, the irrelevant speech task. Uh, we asked the participants to remember the order of the sequence, digit, the digit sequence, and then they need to recall it later. What we manipulated was the rhythmicity of distractors. So whether it is a rhythmic digit sequence or arrhythmic in the distractor. And then we measured the response time from the time where they could respond to the first button press that they did. And we converted it into speed. And what we see is here that rhythmic distractors, uh, participants answer faster or they press the button faster in the rhythmic distractor condition compared to arrhythmic but it is still a very preliminary study and we're still doing follow-up experiments to uh, really see the phenomenon. So come back to this slide. I just want to state that we did test the assumption that uh, distractor suppression is rhythmic, or at least we show some evidence about this. And next we'll be moving on to whether it can be entrained in the future studies. And I would love to uh, thank all my colleagues, previous and current ones, with all their help and guidance in helping us uh, to finish or to do all these studies. Thank you.